Sam. And as Sam comes up, um, she's going to give us this Center City and Westlake update, which are really high priority for us. And I'll just preface, Sam talked to me um, the other day. And I think this is something we want to add on to our June agenda as well. And so Sam, maybe we'll get a start tonight knowing that this will come on. Oh, thanks, Doc. Yes. Thank you. We need to approve the minutes. I, I skipped over that. My apologies. I move that we approve the minutes. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Yes. All right. Thanks, Doc. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, greetings, Christy. Um, well, this is not Emily. Oh, oh this is oh, no, this, was, I this is Jason Fialkoff. He's one of the newest members of SDOT's project development team, and we got him from Austin, Texas. It's a big score for us. Anyway, so this presentation tonight is going to be pretty brief, and it's going to focus on four of the protected bike lanes and where we are with progress. Um, so next slide. We'll see. So, um, Westlake, course. <laughs> Westlake um, cycle tracks is the first one. And just as an anecdote about the timeline things take, um, four years ago, I remember writing the grant to get the $1.7 million to build this project. And lo and behold, it's under construction. So, you know, things do take time, but I also, I'm going to, after Jason talks about 9th Avenue, I'm going to talk about, um, oh, sorry. I should just go over. Yeah, Jason will talk about 9th, and then I'll talk about 2nd Avenue, and then the extension on 2nd Avenue. So, anyways, back to Westlake. So that's just, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, to just know how the projects take a bit of time to develop, um, for Westlake now, they started construction a while ago, and they are almost halfway done with it. So who's written it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty nice, you know, it's got the art elements, it's got that visual contrast um, and ADA improvements so that pedestrians will know not to walk in the protected bike lane. Um, we are here really to talk to you guys about um, encouraging, when you use it, to please ride on the new protected bike lane. Um, don't ride in the parking area where it's already open. That that's a, was a huge issue with the stakeholders when we were out doing outreach. Um, also, we're working with Cascade to have ambassadors on the corridor this Friday to welcome people to the protected bike lane and encourage them to ride it. So it's on schedule for opening in late July. Um, it's um, tentative right now, but um, what's exciting as this project, and we talked about how level it is, what Jason and I are talking about tonight really is a developing that connected spine. Um, and we heard a lot about that t today from the board. Um, and I think you guys will be like, um, well, Sam, there's still a missing piece. And if you think of it, I will talk about it a little bit. Anyway, Jason, thank you. Hey. Welcome, I, Jason. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm Jason Fialkoff, and I got up to Seattle from Austin in uh, the end of September. So I've been working for SDOT for about seven months. And some of the faces in the room are familiar. Um, some I've had the opportunity to talk to at length, and uh, it's, it's nice to be here. I want to echo something Nicole said in Austin. I got here, and in Seattle, I had my introduction to the division, and everybody was like, what do you guys think of Seattle? What's the opinion? And I was like, man, you guys are like light years ahead. Um, and, it, and it was funny because in, it, everybody in Seattle was like, you guys are doing such cool things in Austin. I was like, it's like wow. Like it, it's sometimes the grass seems greener, but it's and I, I when I moved up here I drove across the country and I took my bike and I had the chance to bike in many different cities from Austin to Seattle um, like Denver and Santa Fe the Bay Area and San Francisco and Portland um, and, and we've, we've got it pretty good up here and I, I think there's work to be done but I also think that people like Sam and Kyle Who've, who've been doing this work for a long time. You just, I, th I think you, we just need to remember that you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Um, and I mean, we've eaten a lot more elephant up here than a lot of other cities. <laughs> so uh, one of the projects I'm working on is the 9th Avenue North Protected Bike Lane. It runs from Denny up to the Westlake Cycle Track. Uh, this is the view of 9th Avenue North if you were to be standing in the middle of Mercer looking south. Can't really recommend that. Um, <laughs> right now we've got bicycle lanes on it and it looks pretty good here with the new development. Um, but we're looking at upgrading this facility and, and really adding to that all ages network. 
here's what we're Here's what we're looking at right now, and this is actually an incomplete cross-section because this would just be buffered by planes. Um, we are talking about separation. Uh, we are looking at paint posts right now. Uh, Ninth Avenue North is a pretty complex area because it runs right through South Lake Union. I don't know if anybody here lives in South Lake Union or who rides it. It sounds like some people have ridden it recently. Gordon and I did it with some other folks. Uh, it's, it's a very complex scenario out there. You guys know better than I how development is going um, with the Denny substation and all the redevelopment. So we're at the same and at the same time we're balancing that with you know really trying to figure out we've got this amazing Westlake cycle track going in. We're extending the second avenue PBL further north towards Denny and how can we how can we fill this gap at the same time that um, the rest of Seattle is occurring around us. So right now we are looking at paint and posts, uh, and we're also looking at how can we, we're, we're exploring our options. We're seeing how quickly can we do this, um, given what's going on out there, uh, and we're also looking at how can we kind of phase in development. So right now our, our, our best idea how to do this is, is a phased approach to implementing Ninth Avenue's PBL. Um, so initially, it, it, we are talking. It's a little bit difficult to see the colors up here. Let me just stand up and point it out. We've got the Dexter PBL right now. Who, who, who here has ridden through South Lake Union recently? A lot of people. So, and is everybody riding Dexter or Ninth Avenue? Mostly Dexter. Dexter. Okay. You did the, okay. It, it sounds like it sounds like there's a lot of opportunity. Out there. Um, so so here here we have Ninth Avenue. Here's Dexter. Um, what I'm showing here is the PBL on Dexter. This block between Republica and Harrison is where the ongoing construction is, where some of the bicycle facilities are closed right now. Um, we're not really encompassing everything that's going on, but here we're showing Denny substation projects. They're really out there. Um, working underneath the streets. And at the same time, we're showing some of the upcoming development at the same time as some of the recent development. Here's the Amazon building. Um, if you've ridden Ninth Avenue, you, you might have noticed that there's utility poles within the curb lines right now as they work on some of the uh, development over there. And it's it's very complex redevelopment scenario. So. We're looking at how can we how can we short term provide a connection from the Westlake cycle tracks terminus up here um, across Denny Way to Belltown, and we're we're showing trying to implement to Mercer and then across on Roy to Dexter and finishing up Dexter to in the short term the very short term, uh, and then if you go to the next slide, as we finish. We can go to, here we go. Um, as some of the Denny and reconstruction finishes up, extending the Ninth Avenue PBL in, uh, and then the third slide, as the construction starts to wrap up, finishing it up, we are showing this um, as we leverage some of the ongoing projects and work around some of the ongoing construction as tentatively finishing this up by 2018. Um, that's where we're at right now. We're exploring what we can do short term in terms of can we do a Ninth Avenue PBL within the next year. Uh, this is this is where we're at right now. Thank you, Jason. Okay, so um, I probably should have gone with the Second Avenue North extension, but we put this kind of out of order. So if you were going from north to south. So this is the um, demo area where we're doing the Second Avenue upgrades. Um, so a lot of people know it has the two um, raised passenger load zones at the Marriott and Met Carlton Grill, and the two at the driveway, so the Benaroya driveway and the um, parking garage is north of the Benaroya um, driveway. Um, yeah, I think the bike counter in this section had like 1,300 bicyclists on Monday. Um, we're also the planner boxes also went in, and these all happened before the end of April. 
The signal upgrades are ongoing for the rest of the year. They're a lot more complicated, a lot more expensive, but you've probably seen how the signals now will be kind of hard to see, but spanned over the lanes so that it's not all um, concentrated on the corner. So people who have the green arrow and the then the left turn arrow and then the bike signal, so they're all together. So um, and then we'll do another evaluation study to see how our compliance has changed. It's actually feedback we heard pretty loud and clear from the bike board um, after the project was implemented. Sam, I had a question just on the, the signal upgrade. So I think there's a couple. Of, you were just saying a couple of intersections that are that come later. What, what, is that going to be this year? I yes, mean, they'll be completed this year. Okay. I think that's a real help with the safety of those, that, we as we've talked about here. Agree. So, yeah. So the um, the second avenue safety project. So, um, the where the solid line ends at Pike Street, it goes all the way up to um, Denny, um, and then uh, I'll point out too. So, this is where um, cut, um, Jason's project would be, Ninth Avenue right here, and this is Denny Way, right? So, um, the missing piece is Bell Street, right? to get people connected, long-term plan, this is an aside, is to have a two-way PBL on Bell Street. But one of the things we have to work with is there's um, significant metro transit layover zones there and bus um, routes on that street. So when the um, North Portal is all completed, there's more opportunity to move buses and so we can do that project. But the Second Avenue Safety Project um, as you know, because you guys were briefed a couple months ago, is it'll extend the PBL that we have all the way to Denny. And generally, this response from the community has been positive to neutral. The main concerns we hear, of course, are about congestion, um, but the signal analysis that we've done has shown that it has a very minor impact to added, um, what I would call, travel time delay along the corridor. and the. Biggest number that added to that um, travel time increase were along that project. We're adding three new signals at Clay, Cedar, and Vine. And that really, that's this is a fast-growing area of the city, and pedestrian access to get across Second Avenue with the multiple lanes has been really challenging. And so, these are really complete streets, adding a lot of the pedestrian features and the bike features. And um, the the trade-off for that pedestrian access is pretty significant. And as well, like we will, it, it'll replicate the Second Avenue demo area where the left turns will all be separated from the bike and pedestrian movements. So timeline, um, so I really want to do a, another shout out about how fast projects can happen. So I said Westlake was, I mean it's in construction and, and really from the grant application to construction it was about four years. So this project has $5 million in grants um, to do the Second Avenue project. Um, and we, this project went from our project development division to our capital projects division. And in three and a half months, they have taken it from 30% to 100%. That is lightning speed. We submitted, they submitted, the 100% plans to WashDOT last Friday. So um, we're moving along. So you can see um, we'll finish the design later this summer, and we'll start construction in the fall. It's a six to nine months construction period, so um, that's it. Questions? Because I know we are over. We are over, and Sam, um, we had talked yesterday, was yesterday too, about um, continuing to have this on the <coughs> agenda to do more work in the so we'll, we'll be in communication about that. Really one of, this is a really great example of accelerated and lots of collaboration with us for and we appreciate that. Yeah. Appreciate the work you've done. On it. I remember you saying this is like I got my chance to just really run. And yeah, appreciate that. Okay, thanks, Jason. Right, thanks, we'll, Sam. There's lots more to say. Sorry, that we don't yeah. have No, we'll just <laughs> take about a few more minutes to wrap because we have two important acknowledgments and announcements. So, um, Laura, I'm going to start with you. Go ahead. Oh, I wanted to just say um, tonight is my last SBAM meeting. I'm stepping down after a uh, little over two, uh, my first term ended, I think, in September of last year. And um, so uh, I just immensely enjoyed working with you all and learned so much. And thank you for your mentorship and your leadership. And um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, 
Well, you have Neil behind you, and we love that Neil is back, so we hope to have you come yeah. back, and don't wait for an invitation. So, Laura, this, I hope you can get this home on your bike. I have a little backpack thing where I stick my bike. <laughs> Thank you. Flowers, so that's for you, and, and appreciation. Thank you. And so that leaves us with three openings for us to have. Steve and I are working with Nicole and Amanda Hallfield from the mayor's office, and Jasmine. Marwaha. Marwaha. Um, so we're working on that and that will wrap up soon. Mr. Rowan Rainwater, our senior, <laughs> <laughs> inspiring 70 old year old today. other friends at the Bottleneck Lounge, so you're all welcome to join you there as well. <laughs> uh, and I may sound like there's a lot of things I don't like, but I am so excited about working with all of you folks, and I really do know that we have a great bunch of people working for SDOT. I, you've all been very responsive, very uh, respectful, even when we're a little pissed off at you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, and I look forward to, uh, you know, staying on your case. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for staying a few extra moments. Thank you all in the audience, those of you who are visitors, for coming. We really do appreciate your participating. Oh. Uh, I had some readers wondering if those positions can still be applied for. I'm um, not at this time. Not <coughs> that that, 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 time, that window has closed. I apologize. Yeah. And thank you again, Mike, for all that you do, and especially for you. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. <laughs>